everyone. This is group six, Team Monstropolis. In this group, we have Brina, Brian, Ravi, Ravina, and Keith. This is our midterm finger puppet management presentation, and we hope you enjoy it. In every good TV show, movie, or book, there really needs to be a plot. The plot is a term used to describe the events that make up a story or the main part of a story. Essentially, a plot is the roadmap that takes any story from point A to point B. The plot also really helps draw the viewers in. So the plot to our TV show takes place in the bustling city of Monstropolis. The town is almost entirely employed through one company located in the city center. The business has just changed courses and is now practicing new approaches to re revenue. What was once a former scare factory is now a laughing factory. The new manager, James Sullivan, has recently taken over the new company as head manager along with his best friend and assistant manager, Mike Wazowski. Since both employees have never been in a management role before, they struggle finding balance and how to implement new business models as well as structure. Boggs, the disgruntled employee, was a former top producer at the Scare Factory and is hesitant on the change taking place. He avoids at all costs adapting to the new business model and focuses his energy on sabotaging the Laughing Factory. Boggs' ultimate end goal is to prove that Scare Energy is more efficient source of revenue. And with his eyes set on Sully's new position only, he has the ability to make the company thrive or end all future prospects of success. Unlike the plot of a story, the summary of a TV show is the brief happenings of the beginning, the middle, and the end. It is essentially only the main points. The summary of our TV show is a bit different than that of the original film, Monsters, Inc. The purpose of our show is to convey to our viewers the different aspects of management and the importance of strong leadership and ethical behavior in the workplace. We will focus on key elements such as managing change in the workplace through globalization, technology and resources, basic approaches to ethical decision making, how a business monitors or implements ethics as well as individual barometers of ethics in the workplace, strategies on improving decision making in the workplace such as group decision making and individual decision making, entry barriers and the difficulties of change, a business model to any entirely different standard, and our last one is managing human resources and the hierarchical struggles in the workplace, such as organizational designs and structures. So I'm sure to most of you watching this, our characters may look and sound a bit familiar. We have James P. Sullivan, whose physical attributes show him as a large blue and purple monster who gives off the persona as just a large teddy bear. James P. Sullivan, also known as Sully, is currently the new COO at Monsters, Inc. He is passionate in what he does and tries to do everything he can to keep the team motivated towards the continued success of the company. He is appreciated by all of his friends and coworkers throughout the Monster universe and believes in doing what is right. Sully is a very proficient thinker and has the confidence and ability to inspire everyone. He continues to spread all of his positive energy and vision greater than anyone's and everyone's negativity. Next, we have Mike Wazowski. He is the assistant manager and trusty sidekick to Soli, basically. Mike is an energetic and dynamic assistant manager at the new and improved Laughing Factory. He comes up with a new idea called the Laughing Floor, which sparks interest in the majority of the employees at the factory. He is an analytical thinker and has a fun-loving personality, which makes him pretty easy to get along with at work. Next, we have Randall Boggs, who is the disgruntled employee. And to every show, there needs to be a conflict, and Randall definitely owns the role at being the enemy of the show. Randall is a former top employee within the company, but due to his outperformance and changes within the company, Randall has become dissatisfied with the employees and management. Due to a lack of social consensus, Randall seeks to make changes in an unethical way to rise to the top of the company. He is an analytical thinker with no moral compass and no moral integrity, which makes him very hard to work with. Lastly, we have Roz, our human resource representative. She does not have the most positive outlook on life, given her sluggish persona. However, she doesn't prove to be any threat to the company. 
She is very by the books and has very little interaction with her employees on a personal level. Her standard operational procedural approach gets in the way of building trustful relationships with her staff and management. She is reserved, short and blunt, and only focuses on the job and task at hand. This makes her a valuable employee, but not so easy to work with or for. So also to every TV show, movie, or novel, there needs to be a target audience. So our team wanted to ensure that our target market would be between the ages of five and 15. However, it is just not limited to that age group. Adults and toddlers will also enjoy this story and are more than welcome to watch as well. The rating is PG and the education level will appeal more to those in grade school because the life lessons taught throughout the film are more relatable to those in grade school. The overall concept with this television show is to create an enjoyable learning experience for children of all ages in consideration to ethical decision making, which includes the actions of leaders in the organization as a whole. Target market and format. So like I mentioned earlier, our target market are children between the ages of 5 and 15. The format of our TV show should be animated, pictures, and videos, and these animations should be colorful, full of life, and creative. This is more attractive to a younger audience in order to convey these principles of management and the format by showing relationships. So here's the breakdown of our first seven episodes. As you can see, we have our first four episodes listed on this slide. Episode one talks about the aspect of teamwork Episode two talks about management. Episode three talks about the importance of decision-making. And episode four talks about the environment of management. These four concepts and ideas relate and translate well with what we have been taught in our textbook and with the help of our professor. To go more in depth on each episode, the first episode and the beginning of the movie begins in a factory setting, which has become a laughing factory. This relates to management, specifically Sullivan and Wazowski. As Sullivan is introduced to his position, it is a fairly new position to him, and therefore, him and Wazowski need to collaborate. In episode two, Boggs, an employee, gets fired. However, it's rehired. He undergoes a conversation and meeting with managers. He was not well-liked nor preferred, however, was given another chance to, to prove he deserves the position as an employee. In episode three, Boggs, an employee, decides to pursue the old methods for collecting energy. This relates to decision-making aspect of management. Ross, the director of human resources, keeps a watchful eye on him and on all the employees. She is for, faced with a personal conflict as well as an ethical dilemma in confronting Boggs. In episode four, the team has resolved their personal vendettas. They begin working as a cohesive unit again and more energy is being produced than ever before. Children are no longer afraid of monsters. This episode will highlight communication, personal development, and conflict resolution in the workplace. This slide is a continuation of our episode breakdowns. As you can see, episode five, six, and seven each have concepts that we have learned in our classroom textbook. Episode five hits on strategic management. The team members set goal so that progress can be tracked. Thinking forward and always aiming to improve, Sully decides to write a set of goals and share them with his coworkers so that they can hold him accountable in his pursuit of success. Other team members start to become motivated by Sully's efforts. In episode six, uh, it talks about diverse human resources. The episode, in essence, talks about a drama-free factory rule being instituted. However, not everyone is so reluctant to follow that one simple rule. New rules are frequently implemented in the workplace environment, and a drama-free work zone is established so that the laughing energy from the children is not tainted. A diverse workplace means that people in charge must be understanding and that not everyone is the same. In the seventh episode, it mentions organizational structure. The roles are switched to test the character for efficiency in the workplace. To better understand organizational structure, employees change their name tags so that they can understand what other employees experience and handle on a daily basis. This includes the stressors of the job and how to approach that employee. Just to give our viewers something to picture, we have added in very short clips. 
In the episode one clip, you can see that Sully and Mike are happy about the new change in the company. In the episode two clip, we have Randall Boggs looking like he is enjoying the new work environment, but this is what it only seems like. In the episode three clip, it seems that Randall is up to no good, which poses a very big threat. In the episode four clip, it looks like problems were possibly resolved and they are all back to normal. The laughometer reads low in the episode five clip, so the employees begin to set goals to help their laughometer read higher. The picture representing episode six is Ross, who is instilling the drama-free workplace. In the final episode mini clip representing episode seven is Mike and Sully switching roles to help with the organizational structure within the company. Now here is our group checklist. Our group, Team Monstropolis, has been on track with completing all assignments promptly and successfully. As individuals, we remain committed to the group and our efforts have made this team work. Our goal is to work together as a team to apply these conceptual skills of strategic planning, creativity, and design all in all to generate a great television show teaching morals and fundamentals of managing. Here's everyone's role for the remainder of the course. Brina, presenter and team leader. Brian, executor of the overall plot and summary of the television show. Ravi, presentation designer and producer. Ravina, translating imaginative ideas throughout the show. And Keith, episode originator. As you can see, we constructed a chart on the right for each assignment we have performed and completed as a group. I am proud to say that we have been working hard and rigorously for our assignments to be completed with excellence. That is it. Thank you all for watching our presentation. We look forward to exploring diverse management experiences and ethical principles to our audience. Our end goal is to attract a younger market and audience through relatable content with an end goal of making future managers of today's youth.